Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. The Holy Spirit laid this on my heart and uh, he asked me to share it with you. It's about what happens when one does not accept the truth. What are the consequences of not accepting the truth? And what becomes of you if you deny the truth? If you're not properly grounded in the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Indeed, may I add that Jesus is the only way, the only truth and the only life. There is no truth outside of Jesus. So being grounded in truth equals being grounded in Jesus. And we're going to contrast two people. One who has accepted the truth, who is passionate about the truth, who thirsts for the truth. And then we are going to look at another type of person, quite the opposite. One who either actively rejects the truth, that is, denies the truth, or doesn't care less whether it's the truth or not. They're lukewarm. Okay, lukewarm Christians tend to don't care whether it's the truth or not as long as they're comfortable in their lives. And they will certainly not be passionate about the truth. We're going to Mark and we're going to read a couple of verses in Mark chapter 13. So we're going to verse 4. Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? You will recall that as the uh, apostles were in the Mount of Olives, they came privately to Jesus and they wanted to know more about the signs of the end times. And the hallmark sign of the end times is, will, be, will be the following, as in verse 5. Jesus and Jesus said, and Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Therefore, the hallmark of the end times will be rampant deception. A deception that many cannot imagine. It's on such a large scale. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. And all these are occurring. All right? Um, we have the wars, we have the wo- rumors of wars, you know, there's rumors of WW3 and um, troubles with Iran and the United States, threats, attacks on Saudi Arabia, oil fields, and um, we also have uh, earthquakes which have increased exponentially in diverse places, and famines, and the famines happen because of droughts and floods, and we have plenty of those, but Let us not digress. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Verse 9. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. Okay? You will be delivered up to councils. Right? If you're preaching the truth, say, from the uh, uh, YouTube platform or from Facebook, and um, it's uh, and it's deemed hate speech. You know, nowadays truth is deemed as hate speech. You can find yourself um, struck down from being able to use the YouTube platform, Twitter, and Facebook. For example, Alex Jones. I'm not saying that Alex Jones may be right about everything, or that he's a prophet. No. Certainly not, but he was removed from all these platforms because there must have have been a good deal of truth in what he was saying. 
and you will be beaten in the synagogues. You will, you will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations, and when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. <clears throat> but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now brother will betray brother to death, and the father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down into the house nor enter to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days, and pray that your flight may not be in winter, for in those days there will be tribulation such as has not been. Since the beginning of the creation, which God created until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's, elect's sake, whom he chose, he shortened the days. Let's briefly stop on this verse. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the Lord will shorten those days. Many people have remarked that time seems to have speeded up. So that could be a way of shortening the days. My children, and they are very young children, they have remarked how days are speeding up, how time is flying. And normally it's adults and old people who say that time is flying, you know, not children. So I was really surprised to hear my own children say that time is going by very, very fast. It says no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, who are the elect? The elect are those who have welcomed the truth. They are those who love the truth. They are those who will die for the truth. They will hear nothing but the truth. They will only hear the Lord's voice. The elect are the sheep who listen to his voice, to the Lord's voice. And it says here, whom he chose. He chooses those who love the truth. He chooses those who will hear his voice only. Why? Can anyone hear any other voice? Yes, of course. Other people listen to the voice of the little g God of this word. But the sheep, the elect, will only hear the voice of our Father in heaven through his Holy Spirit. Then, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, he is there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Let's stop again and ponder upon this uh, verse 22. He says, the signs will be so incredible to the extent that, if possible, even the elect would have been deceived, but he said, if possible, therefore he is inferring that it is not possible for the elect to be deceived because the elect listen, the sheep, his sheep listen only to his voice. And because they are guided by the Holy Spirit and not by the little g-god of this word, they cannot be deceived. Verse 23, but take heed, see, I have told you all these things, all things beforehand. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and our sun has already gone dark, and it's estimated by a physicist called Dr. Claudia Elbers that the sun may have gone totally dark already by 1998. I urge you to look her channel up. And the moon will not give its light. 
And therefore, correspondingly, if our sun is darkened, the moon will not give its light because the moon reflects whatever sunlight comes to it. So we have a uh, sun simulation system in operation to keep the inhabitants of the earth fooled. Unless you are one of the elect and you know what's happening. And I believe I've done a video about this previously. Verse 25, the stars of heaven will fall and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 26, then they will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. And that is referring to the rapture. We are word which is although is not found in the Bible, it is derived from the Greek word harpazo, which means to seize or to snatch away violently. So, now learn this parable from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near, so you also. When you see these things happening, know that it is near, at the doors. And you see all these things happening. And we know that we are in the end times. And we know that we are at the very end of the end times. Because things have been ramping up exponentially. And I say things, we're talking to mass animal deaths, floods, droughts, sinkholes, hurricanes, um, locust plagues. Um, water turning to blood red, increased earthquakes, increased volcanism, um, um, so-called hate speech, trying to force upon us agendas which are wicked and perverse, like, like transgenderism and um, uh, immoral sexual lifestyles and um, other forms of immorality and the list goes on and on and on so you also when you see these things happening now that it is near at the doors assuredly i say to you this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away that means they have had every single word of the lord will not return void it means that every single word of our lord will be fulfilled make no mistake each word which he utters from his mouth will be fulfilled because our lord does not speak in vain so now we're going to to Thessalonians 2 and we're going to see a contrast now of those who are not the elect what happens to those who have not chosen to seek the truth have not chosen to love the truth to embrace the truth to seek it to hunger and thirst for it okay so now brethren this is again, as I said, to Thessalonians, and we're going to chapter 2. Now, Britain, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering to him, we ask you not to be so shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. Because many people have in the past set dates and said that the end of the word had arrived and these dates have come and gone and nothing has happened and this verse is indeed referring <coughs> to that and verse 3 it's echoing what jesus says <coughs> almost in the beginning of the chapter of mark 13 when jesus says let no man deceive you and he in 2 thessalonians 2 it's basically repeating the same let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, that is the Antichrist. 
verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all, the, all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, because Satan longs to sit in the temple of God. And the temple of God is your, are your bodies, our bodies. And Satan wants to reside inside our minds rather than the Holy Spirit. So, what will happen to those who will not accept the truth, those who are not grounded in the truth and have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour? And go straight to verse 10. And we'll start from verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs and lying wonders. These signs will be so overwhelming, so wonderful looking, that if you didn't know any better, if you weren't one of the elect, you would be taken in immediately. You would swallow the bait, hook, line and sinker. Verse 10, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because, because I say it again, they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So they are going to perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. And unfortunately, we all have family members and friends who have not yet received the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Therefore, we need to pray for them. Because in praying, we can intercede for them. Verse 11. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. What does this mean? For God will send them strong delusion. Because it's very simple. You either accept the truth and you have the seal of God upon you. If you don't accept the truth, God will send you a strong delusion. There's no sitting on the fence. You either accept the truth or you will be given a strong delusion. And God will do this by allowing Satan to run a deception on such a scale that has never been before and it's being done right now satan is very busy satan is busy deluding people busy deceiving them by any means that they should believe the lie and because they are not grounded in the truth they're not in the body of jesus christ they will be gullible they will believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness see who doesn't accept the truth will be condemned because they did not believe the truth or they did not accept the truth they rejected the truth they denied the truth they had pleasure in unrighteousness because anything that is not the truth is unrighteousness. And now further down, which is, I feel it's relevant, chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. And that we, we, the elect, may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Therefore, Lord Jesus, let us pray. I am praying together with the subscribers who are listening to this video. We would like to pray. That as you pour your Holy Spirit upon all flesh, indeed, that 
our family, our loved ones and our friends are willing to receive your Holy Spirit so that in turn they come to seek you and come to know you as the only way, the only truth and the only life, that they may be saved. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you all.